Hi everyone, it's Coach Fred here, and today I'm going to be going over um, the December 2019 ACT question number 54. Now, remember, we're at 54, we're a little bit harder, but the calculations are usually not that significant, so you just have to say, what are they really testing me on here, okay? So here it says, as shown below, Ollie walked her dog 250 feet due east from the entrance of a dog park to a trash can, and then walked 700 feet in a straight line 25 degrees north of east to a bench. Which of the following expressions is equal to the distance in feet between the en uh, the entrance and the be bench? They put a question mark there. You are looking for this segment right here. All right, so I quickly scan the answers and I see that there's sine, cosine, and tangent in it. Now, I'd love to think that that's Sokotoa, but, what's, but what you have to remember is Sokotoa is used in right triangles. This is an oblique triangle, so you cannot use Sokotoa. So in Algebra 2, um, possibly in geometry, you learned that if you want to find the length um, of, a, of a side in a triangle that is not right, you can use the law of sines or the law of cosines. Okay. Okay, so what you may or may not remember is that you use these two um, on oblique triangles, but you need specific um, things within the triangle to use either one. So the law of sines, um, you basically need two angles and a non-included side or two angles and the included side. Um, so I can see that right now um, I've got two sides. So it's possible I'm going to use the law of sines, but I only have um, I only have the angle. If this is 25, I know that this has to be 155. So I just don't have enough to use the law of sines. But as a reminder, the law of sines would be the sine of A over A equals sine of B, and that's an angle, over B. Now when I use the small variables, that refers to the side lengths of the triangle. So I looked at the answers, and I actually quickly got rid of F and G, because that's not the law of sines. It's a lot, and the law of cosines doesn't look like that. And, um, and there wasn't enough information. So I was left with J and K. Now, you might be saying, Coach Fred, I don't remember the law of cosines. You actually don't need to remember the law of cosines for this one. Vertically scan these answers. Look, 700, 700, 250, 250, 2, 2, 700, 700, 250, 250. The only difference is in the angle. And I hope you'd recognize the fact that you need the angle that's inside the triangle, not outside the triangle. And the angle that is outside the triangle is 25. The angle that's inside the triangle is 155, giving me K as an answer. Okay, well, you may want me to review with you the law of cosines. So let's do that really quickly, okay? So the law of cosines, depending, depending on how you learned it, um, is basically um, A equals, so A would be a side length, um, the square root of B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. And again, all of that, the A, B, and C relates to where you label your A, B, and C um, of your side lengths, okay? So law of sines, sine A over B, A equals sine B over B. Law of cosine, A equals the square root of B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. Um, and again, looking at this, if you tried to plug this into the law of sines, because that's usually the easy one and the one kids remember, um, your angle was 155, so you had to use an angle. So if you did sine 155, that was the only angle you have, you have the unknown under it, you have another side, but you don't have another angle. So you wouldn't have been able to figure out a way to use the law of sines. So therefore, that's another reason or another way that you can remember when to use it. You have to be able to fill out that proportion. All right, guys, hopefully that was a helpful video. Have a great day.